I'm going to be having a look at the Tommy Tippy Perfect Prep. Uh, this one's the EP2262V, I guess for the UK market. Um, I'm assuming that European and uh, US versions are similar. Um, but this one's um, the, the standard white Perfect Prep with a filter. Some of those parts have been removed because I'm about to take it apart on the bench. Now a friend of mine had dropped this off at the workshop earlier on this week and um, the machine's been well cared for. Um, and stored until they've uh, just had another baby and um, went to use this machine and um, it didn't work. Um, whether it had been low on water or um, fatigue or just overheated with a, an air bubble somewhere in the uh, filter, I'm not quite sure, but um, either way, the machine now doesn't do anything, so no lights on when plugged into the mains. Now, turning the machine over, it's quite a simple design. You've just got several screws around the back of the um, the unit, so there's a lid basically that comes off, and they've used a mixture of General Phillips, rather sorry, not the wrong one, General Phillips screws, which I guess most people uh, would have a screwdriver for. What you might not have is one of these. This is a, a sort of triangular screwdriver. It's actually a triangle uh, number three. I'm not sure it's called triangle, but um, that's what it looks like to me. Now, if you've um, if you've got one of those screwdrivers, great. If not, um, a number one or a small small bladed screwdriver will probably do the job just once. It really annoys me this does when uh, manufacturers choose to put something in the way of a repair, um, stopping most people from doing it. But uh, yeah, they've used ordinary screws, I guess, because they're a bit cheaper. And then finally, one of them, just to make it a bit awkward, one of these. But no bother. You can undo it just using a, a normal screwdriver if uh, you want to go down the bodges route. But um, if you've got the right tool, it's one of these and it's a number three. Now upon opening the back, you're greeted with um, a nice little electronic board there with some sensors on it, uh, a power connector, some little um, uh, electromagnetic valves and a pump. This doesn't look actually too much different from um, a coffee machine if you've ever opened one of those up very similar components so we've got a heater some control devices and a pump and some electronic wizardry there just to control things I've actually filmed this slightly out of sequence because you can already see what I've done I've cut out some of the wiring to test but um, what we're going to be looking at straight away as it's dead is incoming point here and testing between here and here so basically making sure power is getting from the plug all the way down the cable into the unit, across all those connectors and onto the main PCB. If it's getting onto the main PCB, uh, it's actually more of a problem. Um, but uh, assuming uh, it's not, I'm hoping it isn't, it's, uh, it could just be a simple fuse. That Now in line with the feed to the main brain of the machine, that uh, this electronic board here, are two live connectors. There's live and there's neutral. And I've actually already chopped out the uh, the neutral fuse, kind of uh, gives you a, a bit of a heads up as to what the fault is. But in line are two thermal fuses like this. Just about see that in shot. These are thermal fuses. They all have a rating on, and these are actually pushed hard up against this device using a little clip which I've contained in a curry pot, like that. The idea being, if that gets too hot, it doesn't uh, self-destruct. It just blows one of those fuses. Uh, these are aluminium uh, can thermal fuses. They pop, fail safe, and the whole thing shuts down. Now, what could have happened is there was an airlock in here. This has just temporarily got too hot. The water's come through, and then it's too late. The fuse is already gone. So we're going to replace that and uh, see how we get on. Now, if you're following this video and you've opened yours up, that clip went about there, and it held that fuse and the fuse I've chopped out against the heater here. This gets very, very hot. So if you just switched yours off and it was running, Bear in mind that could be really hot. Now in line with the feed to the main brain of the machine, that uh, this electronic board here, are two live connectors. There's live and there's neutral. And I've actually already chopped out the uh, the neutral fuse. Kind of uh, gives you a, a bit of a heads up as to what the fault is. But in line are two thermal fuses like this just about see that in shot. These are thermal fuses, they all have a rating on and these are actually pushed hard up against this device using a little clip which I've contained in a curry pot like that. The idea being if that gets too hot it doesn't uh, self-destruct, it just blows one of those fuses. 
these are aluminium uh, can thermal fuses. They pop, fail safe and the whole thing shuts down. Now what could have happened is there was an airlock in here. This has just temporarily got too hot, the water's come through and then it's too late, the fuse already gone. So we're going to replace that and uh, see how we get on. Now if you're following this video and you've opened yours up, that clip went about there and it held that fuse and the fuse I've chopped out against the heater here. This gets very, very hot. So if you just switched yours off and it was running, bear in mind that could be really hot. So still slightly out of sequence. I've already chopped out the neutral fuse. This, these two wires are held either side of the heater with the clip that was in my curry pot. There it is again. So again, if you're following this, that clip went around there and it holds two fuses, one in there and one here for the neutral around the back of the unit of the uh, heater there. Now I've already chopped that out and using a multimeter, that's now, there's now no circuit there, this is dead, that's failed. The other side's okay, so the live works okay, but the neutral has, has failed. So if you're using a test meter or even just a battery and bulb, no current will pass through that. Now I'm not even gonna try and get my camera to focus on, on this fuse. I've only got a basic camera, as you can probably tell. But this one's rated at 172 degrees uh, centigrade Celsius. There are loads of these, uh, and if you go online and just put aluminium can thermal fuses, there are literally hundreds, if not thousands, to choose from out there. Um, I bought two, two new ones, just in case the other one failed, from an eBay supplier. There we go, if I just move it out of the way, you can uh, look them up if you like. Uh, came very, very quickly, within a day. Uh, and these are two replacement fuses for 2 99 so a bit of a bargain there. So there's a new fuse soldered in line with the neutral, the one that was blown. Could it be exactly the same for the uh, the live then. What I'll do is I'll move that cover back over the fuse when I'm all done. Here's a top tip actually, just while I think about it. Um, see the fuse is rated at 172 degrees C. Uh, solder melts at about 180-ish C. So if you hold the soldering iron on there too long, there's potential to do damage to the fuse. So um, what I did is uh, sort of create a, a, a heat sink, a temporary heat sink by holding the uh, the leg that I was soldering to the wire using um, a pair of pliers just to try and uh, dissipate some of that heat quite quickly and then cooling it down just by blowing on it. But uh, do bear that in mind if you keep blow blowing fuses while soldering, it could be because uh, you're getting it too hot. And there's the locking bracket holding the two thermal fuses in line with the heater. It's lucky I didn't film that bit because it was a bit of blue language. Um, that is a bit of a fiddle. Why the uh, manufacturers couldn't um, put a captive nut on that bracket, I'll never know. But um, yeah, once you've um, got the knacker, that is possible to loop over that uh, retaining lug on the bracket with a nut and bolt uh, just by using your finger and a screwdriver. Use a magnetic screwdriver for the, um, the top bit. Um, just to guide that into place. It's quite fiddly, but it can be done. So both of those fuses are in place. Um, all that remains to do is just check the wiring, check I haven't left any tools inside the unit, and put the lid back on and uh, fire it up. So lid all back together again, screws all in, even the annoying little kind of three pin thing there, or three star screwdriver thingy, whatever you call that. Uh, we'll turn it over, give it a live test. Um, better put some water in I guess don't want it overheating just check that's enough yep looks good I'm not quite sure what this thing's supposed to do but um, obviously I know it makes baby milk but uh, oh hello red light on Here's something, better put a jug underneath there because I haven't got a bottle. It's pretty quick. So I'm guessing these are about 40, 50 pounds and a problem solved using a part for 2.99. Well, half that because we only needed one of them. But um, yeah, hopefully this one will run for a bit longer.